Here are nine things that I regret not knowing as a computer science freshman. Number nine, people lie a lot. So I went to Georgia Tech for computer science and a lot of my peers were very qualified individuals. Some who say that they coded ever since they were five years old. Some who say that they knew 15 programming languages as a freshman in college. It was pretty insane out there. And me personally, the natural response as a freshman is like, oh, maybe I'm out of place. Maybe this isn't really the major for me because people are way smarter than me. But then as time passes by, you get to realize that even the people who who claim that they know a lot of these languages really only know how to code like hello world in them or they watch one YouTube tutorial in them. And I didn't really notice that they didn't know much till like later on in the semester when they weren't really doing that well in their classes because they just didn't have the knowledge that they claim to have. Another big lesson that I learned from this is that programming languages really do not matter. You see all those people who knew all those different programming languages, I still did better than in terms of like internships and job opportunities because I focused on learning two or three programming languages and I learned them well. You see, I always recommend people learn Python and Java for introductory data structures, algorithms, those type of things, and then learn JavaScript and probably do some React projects within them. Because if you just spam your resume with all these different languages claiming that you actually know these things when you really have no proof of you actually knowing them with like a project or any experience, then uh, the recruiter is going to see right through that. Number eight, GPA does not matter at all. With the exception of one company, no company has ever asked me for my GPA and the one company that did just wanted to make sure my GPA was above a 3.0. So I always tell people, that focus on getting your bag or getting that internship offer over your grades themselves because that's what's going to matter the most. In terms of getting a full-time job opportunity, actually having internship experience or project experiences or actually proper skills, that'll translate into you getting that fat, juicy $200,000 offer rather than saying that, oh, look, I have a 4.0 GPA. Number seven, there really is no diversity. I always tell people that majoring in computer science is like joining a brown boy desi frat. Like literally everyone is either like Indian or Asian Asian and, and in fact, when I walked around campus and people would look at me, they'd just kind of like assume that I was a computer science major and um, obviously they were right. And the thing is where this sucks is that because everyone has the same background, literally everyone is the same exact personality, which is super annoying because all they want to talk about is coding projects all the time. I mean, kind of what I do on this YouTube channel. But if you actually want to have some serious fun in college, I really recommend that you guys join like a club or activity on campus. Personally, I joined the MSA and the PSA, the Muslim Student Association and the Pakistani Student Association because those were pretty fun and cultural. And by the way, the stereotype that computer science majors are stinky and that they don't shower is true. I mean, of course not me though. Number six, speaking of clubs and activities, most of the leaders of technical extracurriculars usually do it for what they can put on their resume. Like, oh, I'm the president of data science club, or I'm the president of this web development club. Maybe I'll get an interview through that. And oftentimes they run the club extremely poorly. Like for example, when I was a freshman, I joined this data science club thinking that, oh, maybe I can become a data scientist through this. But guess what? They had everyone join and they kind of put people through this boot camp, which were just these PowerPoint slides. And then ultimately they had projects opening, but for 100% club, they had five openings on that project. And I don't really mean to call anyone out, but I was pretty frustrated at the time. And at that point, I realized that technical extracurriculars are just not it. So join clubs and activities that you find actually fun and engaging in, like skateboarding, snowboarding, cooking club, just anything that you will have fun in. And then do projects like personally on the side or in your classes, like you're already coding well enough. You don't need to throw on more in there. Number five, 90% of your degree is absolutely useless. So as part of your computer science degree, you have to take a lot of upper level math courses like applied combinatorics, algorithm, automata complexity, like so many difficult courses and you know it's bad when there are more letters than numbers in the math problems. Now the good news for you is that if you're trying to become a software engineer, once you go full time or even an internship, none of that stuff will matter. So you will never see all those like difficult, like how many combinations or permutations are in the word Mississippi ever again. Also on that point, a lot of your upper level electives, such as I took this one class computer simulations, I have never ever seen that material ever in my life after submitting my final project. So you tell me why you're pulling all those all nighters. Number four, your starting salary does not matter whatsoever. You see, I see a lot of people on TikTok who earn like $200,000 a year or they work at an internship and they make $100 an hour, like these crazy amazing rates. But unfortunately, most people do not earn anywhere close to that. Not everyone works in San Francisco or New York City. Not everyone works for Google, Meta, Apple, all these top tech companies. And so your goal of stepping out of college and earning $200,000 a year 
like it's nice but it's just not realistic to set as your baseline goal and especially early on in your career when you don't really have that many bills when you don't have a family to support your main objective is to learn acquire skills maybe you don't want to work at the top tech company maybe you just want to work at a smaller startup and just acquire all these skills and then later on in your life you'll translate that to becoming a higher senior position at a top company so there are many different options for you so do not worry about where exactly you start because most often than not your starting salary will not stick with you number three object oriented programming matters a lot you see i see a lot of people focus on data structures and algorithms or just like advanced algorithms like greedy algorithm dynamic programming all these different paradigms of programming but sometimes we forget the fundamentals you know i actually tried to test out an object oriented programming my first week of college and i am so grateful that i failed that exam because i've had so many successful interviews because i knew the four object oriented programming principles like inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation and i'm also setting this as a reminder because i know a lot of people who are in those interlevel courseworks who are like yeah this stuff doesn't really matter it's super easy and they often will cheat and so if you are going to cheat which by the way i do not condone please do not cheat in object oriented programming number two if you do not prioritize your health it will deteriorate unfortunately the reality of computer science people or software engineers working in the tech industry is oftentimes you're sitting at a desk staring at a computer coding and people say that sitting is the new smoking that's why i actually got the 63 inch standing desk off of wayfair i'll put the link in the description below and during meetings to start off my day i'll usually put it to a stand so i can actually stand and work i also have this under the desk treadmill that i got off of amazon that you know just helps you get an extra mile or two per day just by walking and other than your physical health your mental health is super super important especially me as a remote software engineer who's just working at home inside this room all day long i have to make sure to actually take breaks actually go out and get some sunlight or actually maybe you know phone a friend because if you are just staring at your screen working on bugs all day long and things aren't working and you don't know what's wrong with your code it can actually cause you to stress out a lot and i actually had my own fair share of like stressful moments throughout this last year and so you need to actually schedule in your break if you don't do that you are not going to be successful in this industry for long on top of that i have this ergonomic keyboard and mouse which actually helps with the natural curvature of your hand it actually has a split in the middle of the keyboard and it has a rest for your thumb so i know it's a little getting used to but it actually provides you a lot of comfort when you're working day to day number one nothing from high school matters this was actually a tough pill for me to swallow because actually coming in from high school i was salutatorian in my class i got a 35 on my act i was captain of my robotics team i got a 5 on ap computer science i had all these things that i thought were really impressive but guess what once you get to college literally no one cares about those things and i was actually talking to a recruiter about like all my different accomplishments and they're like they kept asking like what experience do you have or like what projects have you done that's what they care about they care about your actual coding projects and professional experiences or even college courses like high school stuff and everything from the last 18 years is just for the purpose for you to enter into college once you get into college literally nothing matters from the last 18 years once you move your tassel from left to right on graduation date your last 18 years boom just gone you kind of start on a blank slate again which is kind of scary to think about but just reassure yourself that most people who enter into computer science at college are in the same shoes as you there are obviously going to be some exceptions obviously some people like i said are going to claim that they know all these programming languages some people might even have internships from high school but 95 percent of people are going to be in the same boat as you and you will be fine at the end of the day if you personally are interested in landing a software engineering internship as a computer science student without any experience you might be interested in watching this video right here